Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Safran and welcome to this episode of Nobody Asked, the show where I talk about things that nobody asked for. In this episode, I really wanted to talk about my experience with the UBC Masters of Data Science, specifically the Computational Linguistics stream. It's been about eight months since I finished the program. I feel like now that some time has passed, I can talk about it and be able to share my experience. I remember applying to the program and not really knowing what it was gonna be like. When you go to these info sessions, you don't you know what you're gonna be studying but I didn't really know what it was gonna be like to live those 10 months of doing the program so I kind of just wanted to summarize my experience and have it be a resource if anybody needs it or if anybody's kind of curious about the program I just wanted to talk about it basically I'll just talk about what I was doing before the program to give you context of my academic background and then talk about the actual program what it was like being in it and then also I'll talk about the pace of the program what an average block of the program looked like and just the details like that and before I go further I also I also want to acknowledge that you can probably find a lot of the objective details about the program online and I I'm not here to talk about that talk about like the intricate details of the techniques that you're gonna be learning about I'm more gonna be discussing like my personal experience so essentially like how I experienced this program is gonna be different than anyone else obviously so yeah it's just my own opinion and it's just my own subjective experience and I feel like in a way like having um, hearing some people's subjective experience along with knowing objective information can be really helpful in making the decision to pursue this program or if you're already inbound to do it next year then that can be a really this could be a great resource. Before I started the MDSCL, I also did my undergraduate at UBC. I majored in cognitive systems and I specialized in computer science. So what that basically entailed was a bachelor in computer science, but also I had the chance to take a lot of linguistics classes and I absolutely adored linguistics. Almost all of my electives were linguistic or linguistic related. I took up until second year German and I took six linguistics courses. Um, for them being between third and fourth year courses. It was just, yeah, it, I was like so passionate about it. And I knew from like very early on in my undergrad that I wanted to incorporate linguistics into my career, but I didn't really have an idea of what that would have looked like yet. In terms of job experience, I worked at BC Cancer for a year and I was doing kind of like web development. I did some front end stuff, some back end stuff. I also worked at the Vancouver School of Economics for a co-op. I again was doing full stack development, so web development. I really liked that work, but it just didn't resonate with me as much. I still felt like there was something missing. And then I got the chance to work at the Canary Lab at UBC. And that kind of changed everything. I was working at a lab where we were investigating eye movement and linguistic markers in, in order to be able to predict um, Alzheimer's disease. And we were using machine learning models to be able to do this. And it was just so cool. And I also had just such a lovely mentor at that lab who was just so kind and so helpful and really helped coach me in learning about machine learning. It was a, this huge turning point where I was like, oh, this is definitely something that I want to do. Not that everything is about jobs and money, but when you look at like a lot of data science, machine learning, and natural language processing jobs, they do want you to have a master's or a PhD. So that was definitely daunting. And I kind of knew, okay, I'm going to have to go and get some graduate degree. And also I like school. I mean, I get stressed out a lot and <laughs> school stresses me out, but like I like school. So I was kind of excited to be able to go get a master's. And when I was reading up about the MDSCL, it kind of encapsulated everything that I really wanted to do. Like it wasn't research based, it was coursework. It was all very hands on and fast paced. So that's kind of what drew me to the program. So on September 1st of 2021, I started my first day of the program. I remember getting all this onboarding material and you kind of jump into labs on the third day. I remember feeling a little bit overwhelmed by it. I was like, oh, because in your undergrad degree, you know, you have 13 weeks for a given course. So everything moves a lot slower. But 
for courses in the MDSCL, the way they work is that you have you have six blocks with four courses per block and you finish the course in four weeks and the fifth week is like finals. And it's intense. Like every day it is like they jam pack you with information and courses during the first semester, they start at 8 a.m. and you don't end your day until 4 p.m. So I was really lucky in that I live downtown in the West End, so it took me about 45 minutes in the morning to commute to classes, but it's still coming to class at 8 a.m. So this was kind of like what my average day looked like for the first semester. And of course, I don't think this is indicative of how other people did things, but I really like working out. Like I, maybe I'm like, obsessed with it a little too much but every morning I would wake up at 5 a.m. so that I could go to the gym and then I would come home kind of get ready and around 6 45 to 7 I would leave the house so that I could get to UBC and I would usually come to class about 15 minutes early just so I could get settled I really hate being late it just makes me anxious so I would rather give myself ample time I would get to class and then from 8 until 11 you have three hours of lectures two 1.5 hour sessions and you just stay in the room you don't have to go anywhere the lecturers are the ones that move out and then you have a break from 11 o'clock clock until two so usually what I would do is either do some homework hang out around campus like maybe go get a coffee um, that's like a good chance to get to know people in your class like me and my friend during the semester we would go into the grad lounge we would just sit down maybe we would start our lab or do any homework but it was usually kind of a chill relaxing time and then from two until four you have a lab section so you go to your lab and it's basically you have two hours with the TA where they can help answer your questions questions. That's kind of the structure of every day from Monday to Thursday. So you have four courses and each 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. section you're having your lab. The only thing is is that all of the labs no matter what day you start them on are due on Saturday night and you just have that amount of time to do them. So basically what I would try to do is start the lab the day before I actually had the lab section so that I would come ready with questions. I remember those two hour sessions would go by so quickly because the labs would be so challenging and maybe people who have been in the program are watching me and they're like no the labs are easy but I personally found them hard like I would be in there the whole two hours like <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing and I felt like I was struggling as somebody who has computer science experience so I can't even imagine what it would have been like if you had less computer science experience like I am I totally am in awe and commend the people that did that I don't think it's impossible but it's certainly a lot harder after the labs I would usually go home and then I would have a bit of a rest where I would eat dinner and then usually around 7 to 8 I would do homework until 11 or 12 p.m. And of course, sometimes I would do social things with friends, but on the weekdays, that was usually reserved for homework. And the MDS does a nice thing where on Fridays, we don't have courses. It's just a day where they just kind of line up a bunch of office hours and give people the opportunity to ask any questions. So again, I would always try and plan around that. We have that opportunity to ask for help. I would always kind of line up my questions to be ready on Friday. And for the most part, I would, so Fridays were usually a bit more chill. I always gave myself the chance to sleep in. That was like one of the days of the week where I wasn't getting like five hours of sleep a night, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I would probably be getting like five hours or less of sleep a night just because I would be doing homework. That first semester was pretty hard. I remember there was this one day where I went out to dinner with friends and I came out of the restaurant on Broadway and I remember starting to walk in the wrong direction and my friends were like, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going home, like I'm going to the bus stop. And I was so tired and disoriented that I had no clue where I was. I had no sense of direction and none of the landmarks around me like were familiar. It was a really scary and weird experience. And it was just cause I was so tired and sleep deprived and stressed out. Like the program is really no joke in terms of how fast paced and intense it is. I will say, I don't think in the first semester, the actual concepts are really challenging and hard to grasp. 
it's more like in the amount of time that you have to wrap your head around it, it becomes harder. So that's just the labs and the courses. On top of all that, every two weeks you have a quiz. So basically you do two weeks of classes and on the third week you have a quiz during that 11 to 2 p.m. break where you're tested on the material from the previous two weeks. And then on the fifth week, you're tested on the material of the third and the fourth week. So the actual quizzes, I would say, aren't like unfair or really challenging. It's more like on top of all the labs and all the courses and the new things that you're learning, you have to study for the quizzes and it gets exhausting really fast. So for each block, week three, I remember would always be just so draining. Like I would wake up every morning and I would just dread like this sounds bad but I would wake up and I'm like god and like I can't do it today and at night I would go to bed and I'm like I don't want to wake up tomorrow because it that sounds bad I know but it was like it's so much like it is so stressful for a person to like live like that you couldn't fail the quizzes like you can't fail both quizzes in order to pass the course and you have to pass every course in the program in order to graduate which makes sense it's a 10 month program as I started to settle into the program like I didn't really associate these quizzes as a big stressful thing I kind of would just get so numb to the stress of it that I was like I don't care but at the beginning I got like really stressed out by it. Additionally, at this point in the program, the MDSV, which are the people that aren't in the computational linguistic stream and the CL people, we were all together, like all our courses were together. There's one course in the first semester that is just the CL people where you're learning just kind of the introductory topics about computational linguistics, but it's kind of nice because the course, the classes are a lot bigger and some of the friends that I met during the program we're in the MDSV so it's nice to interact with more people. Yeah, that's kind of the summary of the first semester. So the second semester was considerably harder for me than the first one. You know, there was a lot of reasons for that. First of all, the actual material becomes a lot more complex. That's when we start doing deep learning. And this is also the point in the program where the CL kind of breaks off from the MDSV and we kind of do our own thing. We're learning about specific um, applications of computational linguistics, which is very interesting. We went over syntax, semantics, sentiment analysis, text classification, topic modeling, machine translation. And one of the courses that I remember being really interesting was um, trends in computational linguistics, where they go over whatever the state of art uh, kind of <laughs> papers that are in the field right now. When I took the course, we were going over GPT models. That that was really cool, but so challenging. And I remember I would like, you would get the file for a lab and I remember going to look at it. And in the first semester, I would kind of have more of an idea about how to tackle it. But then in the second semester for blocks four, five and six, I remember just like getting homework and looking at it and just feeling like this sense of dread, like how am I gonna be able to solve this? And of course at the end of the week you're able to, but it just, just got harder and harder. Additionally, we had more project courses. So I think for blocks four, five and six, there's one course per block that instead of having quizzes and instead of having like weekly labs, you kind of have milestones to meet for an overarching project. And I really like that because it kind of gave you a chance to work on a bigger thing and work on a bigger model and project. What was definitely challenging was, you know, coordinating with group work and having to juggle that with like labs as well that's another aspect that made this semester harder and then just in general my personal life absolutely imploded i felt like so socially isolated on a relationship on an interpersonal like issues going on there i was also hit by a car like during that year in april on the day of like a two quizzes it was bad. <laughs> I felt like mentally I was getting beat up every day. <laughs> I, I Maybe I'm being hyperbolic, but I literally was suffering every single day. And I'm not advertising the program very well. I remember like my skin absolutely just said, no, thank you. Not that I like have the best skin in the world, but I had some of like the worst acne of my life that year. 
And on top of like everything else that was going on, I was also like, oh, I look butt fucking ugly every single day. Looks aren't everything, but they definitely did not make me feel like it did not make me feel good. So that was just another thing that was going on during that year. And I do think it was because of the stress. Like I, I don't think I've ever been as stressed as I was last year at the moment. But weirdly enough, as I say this, even though it was so challenging and I was going through it, at no point did I feel like I was in the wrong place. As challenging as it was, it was so interesting and in a sense, it was so rewarding. Like I was doing exactly what I wanted to do. And like, even though all this stuff was happening, I felt like I had this overarching motivation because I'm like, I'm doing what I love. Like I am able to combine linguistics and computer science together. And I'm like so lucky to be able to like actually really, really like the thing I'm studying. Like I know I'm being very dramatic of talking about this program, but I actually really enjoyed what I was learning. And the profs were so lovely, especially um, when it was just us working with the CL professors. The classes were smaller and more intimate and I felt really excited to be in class every day and the professors were really kind and you could tell they loved what they did as well. And it's like, I don't know, when you see people that are passionate about a certain field, it kind of inspires you as well. So that was just another part of the program that I really liked. Like, just being able to have access to expert in natural language processing and computational linguistics was so valuable and really special. The last important thing that I think I really need to talk about about the MDSCL is the capstone project that you do. They have a bunch of different companies or organizations that come in, they submit project proposals, and you get to vote on the, the top five that you think are interesting, and then they do some sort of like I don't know, like selection thing, and they try and put you in at least your top three choices. I actually got my top one choice. Um, I worked with a company called Culture Foundry, and they create language revitalization learning apps, and I got to create an Ojibwe language conjugator. For anyone who's kind of like, what is that? Like, if you ever took French class or German, like, you know, when you go online, you search how to conjugate a verb, like, we were able to create a conjugating tool that takes in a certain verb and conjugates it for all the different like I, you, he, she, and there's a couple more in Ojibwe that aren't there in English, but it was such a cool project and it was really rewarding to be able to work on a project of such a huge scale and to apply like some of the stuff that we learned into this project and it also felt meaningful like i had taken like some um classes about indigenous languages and in one of my linguistics courses we learned about language revitalization so it was a topic that was like that felt really important to me so to be able to actually create a tool that could help language learners for ojibwe was like so so special the company that we worked with was really supportive and they gave us like access to people who could advise us on the language and just in general I felt really supported like we had multiple check-ins throughout the week to assess how we were doing and also um, you're given a mentor from UBC to kind of help you as well so I really appreciated the help from UBC and Culture Foundry in doing this project. Some of the aspects that were more challenging about this capstone project was the timeline. Um, we only had eight weeks to do this and basically two of the weeks you're kind of expected to have the product done and you're supposed to be writing a report and you have to create two videos, one 30 minute video, one five minute video to be able to present, one to present, one to give to the company. And you're also expected to write like 25 ish page report for them as well. It's a lot of work to do that on top of building the actual tool. And the actual tool was a lot of work. <laughs> I think my mistake when I, if I could do this again, I would have been more clear about work delegation of work and I would have been more clear about what I needed from my group mates I don't think I communicated that as well so I took on a lot of work that I think could have been shared 
with other people and I just didn't know how to communicate that. In the end, I ended up like reaching out to the prof to kind of ask for help in, deleg in delegating. Because at the end, I felt like I was burning out. And it wasn't just because of the capstone, it was also like the eight months prior to doing the capstone were incredibly stressful. The, in particular, the last four months leading up to the capstone were some of the most stressful, emotional, emotionally stressful time of my life. So there was just a lot going on in life that made it really difficult for me to like try to like give it my all. But in retrospect, I look at the work that I did and the amount of effort I put in and I'm like in awe that I we finished everything and I think we had a great final product and we kind of did everything that I finished everything that I set out to do in this project and it was a really valuable experience. Although the capstone was really challenging and I definitely felt like crying a lot, I really really enjoyed it and it was just Again, the actual project was really special to me and I felt very connected to it. So I really put in as like as much as I could to try and get it done on time. Overall, I'm really happy I did this program. Even though it was a really difficult year, it was really rewarding and it gave me so many really great skills to be able to use as a computational linguist. And like I said before, the whole time, I kind of felt like I was studying the right thing. I was doing what I was meant for, you know, like as cheesy as that sounds. I felt like this overarching purpose with everything. Yeah, and in terms of how useful the program was, I literally used so like almost all of the skills that I learned in the program, like every day, every week, every month of my job. I'm currently working at Vancouver Coastal Health where I I was hired to do natural language processing and yeah, I feel very lucky that I'm able to do that. I'm lucky that I'm able to use the skills that I learned in this program every day. It's very cool. I'm really happy that I did it. I'm grateful to, pro to the program and I'm grateful to the path that I took. If you're considering doing it, you just have to be ready for it to be kind of a brutal year. I think it's rewarding and I think you just have to ask yourself whether or not you really like data science and, co and you want to go into computational linguistics and you know, do with that information what you will. But that's kind of all I have to say about the program and my experience. When I talk about it, I say very negative things, but then I feel very positively about the program. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like most people who did the program kind of have a similar experience to me where they're like, it fucking sucked. It was brutal, but I'm I really happy that I did it and it was great, you know? If you're at the end, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was somewhat useful for you when making a decision or wanting to know about the Masters of Data Science, specifically the Computational Linguistics stream. Again, this is definitely more about my experience and very subjective, but like I said at the beginning, I think there is some use to subjective information. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.